Automatic transaxles are becoming more widely used in this rapidly developing society. And the automatic transaxles are continuously improving, too. In this video, we would like to give you a detailed explanation on the mechanical system, an in-depth explanation to break down diagnosis. This videotape consists of Introduction Overhaul Parts inspection and adjustment Let's begin with the introduction. In this chapter, we learn about the internal structures and components and power flow of HIVEC automatic transaxle. First is an explanation on the internal structure and components. The structure of new generation auto transaxle is divided into two types, four speed and five speed types. Four speed auto transaxle consists of three clutches two brakes, and one-way clutch like the conventional driving forward four-speed automatic transaxle. These are underdrive clutch, reverse clutch, overdrive clutch, low and reverse brake, second brake, one-way clutch, in case of five-speed automatic transaxle, fan type reduction brake and direct clutch and one-way clutch are additionally installed as sub-transaxle besides four-speed automatic transaxle. Simpson type planetary gear consists of two sets of carriers. These are output planetary carrier and overdrive planetary carrier. For 5-speed HIVEC automatic transaxle, direct planetary gear is additionally installed to the sub-transaxle. Filtering capacity has been further improved by adopting extra sub-oil filter along with main oil filter. Engine oil filter shouldn't be used for the automatic transaxle oil filter. Filters are usually changed when automatic transaxle fluid is changed. Oil pump should be replaced by the unit of assembly. Retainer for both reverse clutch and overdrive clutch have a common retainer. One-way clutch is applied to fix the low and reverse brake analyst gear. For five-speed automatic transaxle, as explained previously, One-way clutch is additionally installed on the sub-transaxle. Reaction plate is bandless type, which can be used commonly for both second brake and low and reverse brake. The function of accumulators is to absorb pulsation when the solenoid valve is applied and also prevents sudden pressure drop when the solenoid valve is released. Four accumulators can be distinguished by their spring colors. Now let's look at power flow. It is very important to understand the basic power flow for the diagnosis of HIVEC auto transaxle. Basic components for the power flow are overdrive planetary carrier underdrive sun gear, low and reverse annulus gear, and output planetary carrier. These four gears are most important parts for power flow. Even in parking in neutral range, oil pressure is applied for low and reverse brake. In case of first speed gear, underdrive clutch and low and reverse brake which have been applied in the neutral range operate simultaneously. Oil pressure is not applied to low and reverse gear when the vehicle speed becomes more than five kilometers per hour. Then one-way clutch functions braking instead of low and reverse brake. 
First, engine power passes torque converter and the oil pressure connects the underdrive clutch. Then the underdrive clutch rotates the sun gear to transfer the power. Output gear that is connected to the sun gear rotates to the opposite direction. Then output planetary gear rotates to the right because low and reverse annulus gear is fixed. The power is output and transferred to the wheels. In second speed, underdrive clutch and second brake are operated. Underdrive clutch is always in operation until the third speed of forward drive. Like the first speed, power is transferred to the underdrive clutch and drives the sun gear and accordingly output pinion is driven. Since the reverse sun gear is fixed by the second brake, driving force from the output annulus gear rotates the overdrive planetary carrier to the right direction. As the overdrive pinion idles around the reverse sun gear. In third speed, underdrive clutch and overdrive clutch operate simultaneously since the rotations of the overdrive clutch are identical with the rotations of low and reverse annulus gear they rotate in one motion as the planetary gear set is fixed accordingly gear ratio is one to one in fourth speed overdrive clutch and second brake operate driving force from the input shaft is lifted to overdrive planetary carrier by way of reverse clutch. On the other hand, rotations of output annulus gear are accelerated since the reverse sun gear is fixed by the second brake and idle rotation of overdrive pinion reverse sun gear is added to the overdrive carrier rotation. In reverse, reverse clutch and low and reverse brake operate. Driving force of the input shaft is transferred to the reverse sun gear by way of reverse clutch. On the other hand, since the overdrive carrier is fixed by the low and reverse brake, driving force of reverse sun gear causes the left directional rotation force to the output annulus gear. This force drives the output pinion to let the underdrive sun gear idle freely. So, the output carrier is not affected at all. In 5-speed Hybeck automatic transaxle, 5th speed can be generated by the sub-transaxle. The power flow is identical with the 4-speed automatic transaxle. Next is the explanation for the overhaul. In this chapter, caution in assembly and disassembly and inspection method using special service tools are explained. The sub-oil filter and all electrical parts, namely input shaft speed sensor, output shaft speed sensor, transaxle rain switch, vehicle speed sensor, and oil cooler pipes are removed first. Then disassemble the oil pan and valve body assembly. In disassembling valve body assembly do not loosen the golden bolts of the valve body. Since each bolt has six different lengths be careful in reassembling the valve body. Two steel balls are inserted at the upper part of the outside valve body, which function to shut off the drain hole by gravity. Be careful not to lose these two balls in assembling or disassembling. Now for the strainer and second brake retainer oil seal. When reassembling the second brake retainer, Second brake retainer should be assembled before second brake oil seal. This procedure prevents oil seal damage. 
Take special care about the number and color of the springs when you disassemble the four accumulator pistons. As for the 5-speed HiVec automatic transaxle, reduction brake accumulator and direct clutch accumulator are additionally installed for the sub-transaxle, which has only one spring. Disassemble the torque converter housing first. Then separate the differential gear, main oil filter, and oil pump. Besides, pay attention to the two O-rings next to the oil pump. This is underdrive clutch retainer, where input shaft speed sensor detects rotation of automatic transaxle input shaft. Disassemble the underdrive clutch hub and disassemble the rear cover next. Paying attention to the O-ring of transaxle case after disassembling rear cover. Disassemble the reverse and overdrive clutch. Keep disassembling parts like overdrive clutch hub, reverse sun gear, second brake, and low and reverse brake. Take care to assemble the correct brake disc by distinguishing the second brake and low and reverse brake. The frictional pad of the second brake disc is wider than that of low and reverse brake. Since the different number of clutch and brake is applied by the models of Hyvec automatic transaxle, refer to the following information for assembly. F4A42 is for less than 2 liter engines. F4A51 is for 2.5 and 2.7 liter engines. And F5A51 is used for the 5 speed automatic transaxle of engines greater than 3 liters. For the extra large automatic transaxle, F5AH1 is used. When overdrive planetary carrier is rotated from rear cover's side after it is assembled, the direction has to be counterclockwise. Apply the air pressure to the hole of low and reverse brake of the valve body side transaxle case to separate the low and reverse brake piston. When assembling the brake plate and disc of the underdrive clutch, Check the assembling direction for the smooth lubrication of overdrive clutch. This is also applied to the assembly of overdrive clutch, reverse clutch, and direct clutch of 5-speed automatic transaxle. Now let's move on to the thrust bearing. 4-speed automatic transaxle has 8 thrust bearings in all. And for 5-speed automatic transaxle, four thrust bearings additionally installed at the sub-transaxle, namely 12 bearings are installed in all. To adjust the in play of clutch or parts, only number one and number eight can be selected and changed. None can be changed except those two. Number one thrust washer is to adjust the in play of the input shaft. It's made of fiber and installed at the underdrive clutch. Thrust bearings of numbers 2, 3, 5, and 6 are identical in terms of outer diameter, inner diameter, and thickness, so they are interchangeable. Number 8 thrust washer is to adjust the in play of underdrive sun gear and installed between the rear cover and reverse clutch. Now, parts inspection and adjustment. In this chapter, checkpoints of mechanical system and oil seal inspection will be explained. First, checkpoints and methods of the components will be explained. First, measure the in play of input shaft using dial gauge. 
If the measured data exceeds the specifications, replace the number one thrust washer. Measure the end play before the transaxle disassembly and compare measured value after assembly of input shaft. Since the wave type discs are applied to the underdrive clutch and overdrive clutch, measure the end play with thickness gauge after installing spring compressor. When it is over the specification, adjust the end play of all clutches except brake by snap ring. Select a snap ring from 15 kinds of thickness and replace it. Overdrive clutch can be measured by the same way too. If the measured value exceeds the specifications, replace the snap ring with one of the 15 different thickness snap rings by the same way with the underdrive clutch. Reverse clutch is measured with the thickness gauge as the reaction plate is pressed with approximately 5 kilogram force by hand. If the measured value exceeds the specification, change the snap ring with one of the 10 different snap ring. The measurement and the adjustment of the in play of the disc and plate have been explained so far. As for the reverse clutch and overdrive clutch, in play of return spring should be measured and adjusted in addition to the disc and plate. Measure the gap between snap ring and retainer with the thickness gauge by pressing the return spring retainer with approximately 5 kilogram force by hand. If the measured value exceeds the specification, change the snap ring with one of the four different snap rings in thickness. In 5-speed HIVEC automatic transaxle, direct clutch is measured the same way as reverse clutch. If it exceeds the specification, change the snap ring with one of the 12 different snap rings in thickness. Be careful about measurement procedures when measuring the end play of second brake and low and reverse brake. First, the end play of low and reverse brake reaction plate. Second, end play of second brake. Third, end play of low and reverse brake. Fourth, end play of underdrive sun gear. First, let us explain the measurement and adjustment of end play of low and reverse brake reaction plate. Assemble the wave spring, brake plate and disc, reaction plate and snap ring starting from low and reverse brake, and change the brake plate that is located at the lowest part with special tool dummy plate. Install the dial gauge and measure the end play by moving the dummy plate up and down. If the measured value exceeds the specification, Change the upper ring with one of the four different rings in thickness. To emphasize again, this is the end play of not the whole brake, but the reaction plate. Secondly, let us explain the measurement and adjustment of end play of second brake. To measure the end play of second brake, the in play value of reaction plate should be normal. In other words, if the in play value of reaction plate exceeds the specification, adjust the in play value by changing the snap ring with the new one to measure the in play of the second brake. Then, change the brake plate that is positioned at the uppermost part of the second brake with special tool dummy plate and assemble from the bottom low and reverse brake to the top second brake piston and snap ring. Install the dial gauge and measure the end play by moving the dummy plate up and down. If the measured value exceeds the specification, change the pressure plate of the second brake with one of the eight different plates in thickness. Pressure plate is just below the coil type return spring. To emphasize again, not a snap ring, but pressure plate of the second brake should be changed in this case. Third, 
Let us explain the measurement and adjustment of in-play of low and reverse brake. Once the transaxle is turned upside down to the oil pump side, change the pressure plate with special tool dummy plate and assemble the parts. Pressure plate is just below the wave spring of low and reverse brake. Just assemble parts to the reaction plate of low and reverse plate not having to assemble to the second brake. Install the dial gauge and measure the end plate. If the measured value exceeds the specification, change the pressure plate of the low and reverse brake with one of the eight different plates in thickness in the same way as the second brake. To emphasize again, not a snap ring, but a pressure plate of low and reverse brake should be changed. Finally, let us explain about the sun gear in play of underdrive. When planetary gear assembly is disassembled, there is an underdrive sun gear whose in play needs to be measured and adjusted to. Since the oil pump side of the transaxle should be measured, turn the transaxle upside down and install the dial gauge to measure. If the measured value exceeds the specification, change the number 8 thrust washer with one of the 10 different washers in thickness. Number 8 thrust washer is between rear cover and reverse clutch. Lastly, oil seal inspection will be explained. First, check the appearance for damage of the two seal rings where underdrive clutch of the input shaft is assembled. If damaged, oil leaks from the torque converter and release pressure of damper clutch decreases. Then it might cause the damper clutch to malfunction. Check the appearance damage of oil seal and O-ring of oil pump, which is connected to the transaxle case. and check the appearance damage of the two D-rings of oil pump installed at the connecting point with underdrive clutch. If any of the two D-rings is damaged, supplying oil to the underdrive clutch leaks to cause difficulty in forward driving. Next, check the three O-rings placed in the underdrive clutch. If these three are damaged, trouble in driving forward and transfer shock may occur. This is due to oil leakage of underdrive clutch. Next, check inner and outer seal rings installed at the piston of second brake and low and reverse brake to identify any damage. Among four D-rings installed at the rear case, two upper rings are to prevent the leakage in oil supply to the overdrive clutch. If these are damaged, third speed or fourth speed driving may be impossible due to the oil leakage. Two D-rings installed at the lower part of the rear cover are to prevent the leakage in oil supply to the reverse clutch. Therefore, when damaged, there may be trouble in reverse clutch operation while backing up. Seal rings placed in the outer part of overdrive clutch piston and reverse clutch piston. That is, the seal rings placed in the outer part of overdrive clutch retainer are for the prevention of oil leakage when each clutch is in use. Between two seal rings installed at the reverse clutch retainer, the upper ring prevents leakage in overdrive piston operation, and the lower ring prevents the leakage in reverse clutch piston operation. As for the five-speed automatic transaxle, the existence of any possible damage of the seal ring installed at the servo piston of reduction brake should be checked. Also, check for any damage of seal ring installed at the direct clutch piston.
two seal rings should be checked too, which are installed at the return spring retainer, namely centrifugal oil pressure balancer. In five-speed automatic transaxle, centrifugal oil pressure balancer is installed at the direct clutch. Check the seal ring damage of it too. When assembling five-speed automatic transaxle, adjust the band clearance of band type reduction brake installed at the sub-transaxle. Next, install the reduction brake piston snap ring. Hold the reduction brake piston to prevent turning and tighten and release the adjuster rod two times with tightening torque of 100 kilogram force centimeters. Tighten with 50 kilogram force centimeters torque again and release 5.5 or 5.75 rounds. Tighten the reduction brake piston rod holding nut while applying torque. Tightening torque is from 150 to 220 kilogram force centimeters. Which element is engaged by oil pressure in the end range? A. Underdrive clutch. B. Low and reverse brake. C. Overdrive clutch. D. Second brake. E. Reverse clutch. The answer is B. Low and reverse brake. فراموش نکنید که توی کانال سابسکرایب کنید زنگوله رو به صدا در بیارید و کانال رو با دیگر دوستانتون به اشتراک بذارید تا ویدیوی بعدی روز روزگار خوش